Hello and welcome back. So Activision Blizzard is a company for which I've talked about in the past and uh, I was saying that I wanted to get a better entry point and that the company looked relatively appetizing. Now you will see here that uh, the company has a one year high of $99 and a one year low of $56 and uh, as you are looking at the pretty much all the points here gathered for the one year chart you will see that it's slowly creeping up uh, lower and uh, this potentially gives us an interesting entry point. Now some news also came out today because Brexit Hathaway had their uh, pretty much meeting and um, Warren Buffett revealed his boosted stake in Activision Blizzard to 9.5% and so I'm pretty sure people will get more interested. Now I don't, uh, I don't purchase a stock because Warren Buffett uh, bought it but it definitely plays a little bit of a, uh, a role in my decision. It helps a little bit because I know that he has done his due diligence. Yet I always want to examine what's happening on my own because Warren Buffett could have some uh, preference, could have some preferred dividends, could have some warranties. There are a lot of things that could be different for a, a large investor of that size. Now for me, I want to make sure that I'm getting a decent company with solid financials at a cheap price is what I want to be doing and not really just blindly follow what Warren Buffett is doing, although I would definitely take a look at what's going on with his purchases. Now the peer ratio of the company sitting at 22 is lower than what it used to be. Price of free cash flow ratio sitting at 25, slightly more elevated than what I'd like it to be, but uh, this doesn't mean anything. We have to examine like the growth, we have to examine how the company is doing in terms of the net income free cash flow, because it may be okay to pay a little bit of extra, extra money just to get something that's growing nicely and it's doing well financially, I wouldn't mind that. And of course the social the stock evaluation tool will tell, will tell us how close we are to what we would like to pay. Using this, uh, actually consulting these two values, we are probably close, but we'll see that later. Now outstanding, outstanding shares slightly elevated, but not to the point where I would be concerned. 3%, I'd love it to go lower, but it doesn't concern me that much. If it was like 15, 20%, then I, could, uh, I would pay more attention. Free cash flow to total liability is 3.19, that's pretty fair as well means that the company can actually use their last year's free cash flow to pay back all their total liabilities. That's uh, in three years, which is great. Anything below five is what the threshold is here, because uh, this, um, this means that the company is relatively sol solvent in terms of uh, how many total liabilities they have for their free cash flow. Now, uh, the five-year revenue growth has been uh, relatively okay. I mean, it's not great, it's not uh, bad, but it's not something that the company can really, really boast about. It's, uh, it's fair, I'd say. Nothing, nothing too insane. However, the five-year net income growth uh, has been uh, obviously much, much better. And you have to remember that it started at a low place. And so when you're starting at a low place, like 200 million to, to, uh, to like uh, 2.7 billion, is an insane increase. But uh, in absolute numbers, still it's pretty good, but uh, it's not like you are growing from 50 billion. So you have to bear that in mind. Still, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good value. Now, the five-year free cash flow growth, though, it's uh, much more constricted here. We need to examine why. The five-year total equity growth at 86% without the company issuing insane amounts of shares, although they did issue a little bit. Now, the debt to equity ratio is pretty low as well. We could kind of guess that based on the free cash flow to total liabilities. But even in, in relation to equity, their debt is uh, pretty cool here. And also their current ratio is very elevated, which means that they have a lot of current assets when you compare them to, to, to current liabilities, meaning that they are very, very solvent for the next uh, 12 months, the shorter pe period. Now, the net income margin, 30% is pretty awesome over here. And um, the returns here are all pretty good as well, especially the return on equity, 14.4% is definitely something that I like to see. Now, the company is also paying a little bit of a dividend, which is about 15% of their and net income and about sorry of their free cash flow and about uh, about 15 about percent again 14.8 uh, of their uh, net income over here so this is very very um, fulfillable the company wouldn't have trouble paying the dividend yield of course to pay the dividends now let's take a little bit of a closer look at the financial statements see what's going on uh, in detail before we jump to our stock evaluation tool from 7 billion in revenue to 8.8 .8, again this is not insane growth we have established that already in terms of the revenue yeah, it's, it's not bad either, but um, paying a little bit of a multiple here may, make, may not make massive sense based on the increase in revenue of the company. Now, if we go down, you will see that their net income grew from 200 million to 2.7 million. And that's something that I like to see, of course, so that's uh, pretty good. Although notice that in the previous year, this is a 70% dec decline from the previous year, 2016, that would be. 
but it has been increasing nicely over the next few years, so that's another good thing to see. Again, this, uh, this is a company that is a game compa gaming company, so it, it has a lot to do with current trends and what kind of uh, uh, games they release, of course. So this is something important as well. Now, um, the total equity of the company has been increasing from 9.6 billion to 17.6 billion, with an additional paid in capital that's uh, pretty substantial here as well, as you'll see. And so, yeah, we are having the company increasing its uh, assets with a little bit of a help from uh, shareholders as well. But overall, they are making better total equity. What I want to see, though, is the cash flow. What's going on with the cash flow? So the net income has been positive, and then we, when we add back all the depreciation, amortization, and stock-based compensation, we are getting to this kind of uh, net cash provided by operating activities. And when we go down a little bit and actually extract the capital expenditures, which are very low, this is a software company, that's a very good thing about it, then we're getting free cash flow that is um, about the same from 2017, really. That's not a great thing, a great thing to see, of course. It's marginally elevated, so there's not an insane increase, mainly because this was, there was this decline over here. But um, it looks like the company has a little bit of a stagnation, stagnation here in terms of their free cash flow growth. Interesting to see as well. Now, in terms of investing activities, um, they are investing a little bit, not too much, as you see. Just a few million here, so nothing to see here for the most part. And uh, net cash provided by financing activities, also negative here, some uh, paying off of debt and uh, some dividends paid, of course, very, very easily fulfillable for the company as we examined earlier. You can kind of see that this is 2 billion, 2.3 billion in uh, free cash flow and um, the company just pays 300 million in uh, dividends paid. So that's pretty great. All right, so let's take a look at our stock evaluation tool now and uh, deduce what kind of money we should be paying for the company. So we're seeing here that the revenue has been increasing at a steady rate, uh, excluding this year, of course. So 6, 6 and uh, 8.87, we can go somewhere in between. Let's just say 6, uh, 6, 7 and 8 would probably make a lot of sense here. And uh, net income margin, and may, it may be even may even be a little bit too much, actually. Net income margin of uh, 21 to 30. Again, we can go somewhere in between 20, 25 and 30 here. Free cash flow margin. Overall, the company is at near 100, 100, 100% level, 80 to 100. I'd say maybe use 90, 100 and, uh, 105, I think makes sense. And 13% for our annual return here is what I typically like to make out of any single stock. Let's hit calculate. And you will see that uh, even though I love the company, we are still a little bit uh, behind what I'd love it, I'd like to get it at. It's maybe a little bit elevated still, and that's mainly because of the margins, I'd say. And um, actually, not the margins, the margins are not that terrible. The revenue growth is probably the most important thing here. So if you expect that the company's revenue growth is going to be more, it's going to be a little bit elevated, let's just say 8, 10 and 12. This may be potentially given an, an entry point here, yeah, just on the high. So yeah, this may be a little bit of, an over, of a stretch here. So I myself would probably go lower, basically use what I used earlier, maybe say 6, 7 and 8 over here. And even that again, maybe a little bit of a stretch because some years it looks like the company wasn't doing great over here and it did have, it did have a couple of years with 6 as well. It's only this year that skews the thing upwards for the most part. So uh, right now I'm not looking to get it because it's expensive for my taste, it looks like. I'd like to get it at a lower price, maybe, maybe about, um, I don't know, maybe in between these two. 45, 40, maybe that would make a ton of sense. I don't know if that will reach it, but uh, I find it to be a little bit um, expensive for me right now. And I think at some point it was near that level. Let's examine the one year again, just to see that. You will see that, yeah, at some point it was actually down over here. Uh, so 57 over here. Yeah, 56 was the one year low, so better than what it is right now. So I think it's a little bit elevated for what I want. And I think I will avoid for now. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me let me know how, what do you think about Activision and uh, would you actually add this company to your portfolio? What do you think about it? And thanks for watching the video. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.